are alive. All right, I got 6.30 based on my phone, so we will go ahead and get started. We'll call the meeting to order with uh, roll call, please. Here. 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 Please join me in the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have minutes from the regular meeting on April 12th and special meeting on April 28th. I move for approval of the April 12th and April 28th minutes. Second. A motion and a second then for approval of the minutes on April 12th and April 28th. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right. I appreciate everybody's attendance. I see we got some uh, additional people in the crowd tonight, so thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you for all those that might be joining us uh, virtually as well. We do have somebody signed up for public comment. Just a reminder that in recognition of the privacy rights of individuals and employees of the district, the Board of Education prohibits any public comment on individual employees or, cons <coughs> or constituents of the district and all matters in which the employee or constituent may be identified or inferred from the comments. The Board of Education will generally not discuss or take action on non-agenda items brought by the public at that meeting. With that said, I have uh, Betsy Ramsdale. Yes, good evening, hello. Um, my name is Betsy Ramsdale. I teach at the middle school. Uh, this year has been challenging. Actually, it's been a challenge after a challenge <laughs> for teachers at all levels, as it has been for our students and their families. We have a lot of plates to keep spinning for three more weeks. Three more marvelous weeks. Personally, I have enjoyed watching your meetings on YouTube from my couch. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's a practice you will continue even after COVID restrictions have been lifted. Today, I chose to venture out to attend in person. Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week. And we received a touching note and token from the school board, not just teachers. It's my understanding it was all Every district employee got, got this. And I would simply like to say thank you for the recognition and the appreciation of all our hard work during this difficult time. Um, this appreciation have made it, has made it that much easier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Betsy. <coughs> We will. <laughs> Some, sometimes I wish I could be on my coach too. I'm not gonna <laughs> All right, I thank Betsy for those uh, sentiments, and I know that uh, the board has gotten a lot of correspondence over the course of this last week. Um, so please read those over. Um, uh, the appreciation of staff is important. I think we might go over some of that in recognitions as well, um, and Betsy's sentiments are important as well. So thank you for that. Uh, we'll move on to announcements, 7.1. The board may recess into closed session per Wisconsin statute 19.85, parent 1, parent C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility specifically to discuss specific employees. The board will reconvene into open session for the possible transaction of business and adjournment. All right, thank you, Bev. Within of the agenda, if I could have an adoption motion. I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second then to adopt <coughs> the agenda as presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right, we have an agenda. And with that, we will move on to 9.1. Reports presented by the administration. School of the month, the high school. Welcome. <laughs> so um, first I'd like to just say thank you for uh, being here yet again and putting in all your time to help our district be as strong as it is. And I just want to also say as a first year administrator, it, it really has been a unique year, uh, but it's been a, a great one. There's been so many great things. Um, I'd, I'd obviously start by you know, giving a lot of praise to the, those who I work with, both our administrators and our uh, staff members, our teachers are just doing a fantastic job. And then in, in addition, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to obviously point out our, our students and all the work that they do. And it's, it really, it's been a, a great year. And then I also would like to share, and I know um, many people have shared their, their thoughts with me, just for your appreciation and the, the and just saying thank you for what you guys have done as well, uh, especially with that uh, last uh, little gift. And that, that was very, very appreciative um, from so many different people that, that I've uh, met with and spoke to. So um, on that note, uh, Mr. Tronson, the school has created this uh, video to present <coughs> the high school for the month.
By the end of the 2020-21 school year, we will increase the total number of students proficient by 5% for all students and 10% in our subgroups, as measured by the ACT and Aspire. This year, we had a team of teachers from different content areas participate in a book study on text-dependent questions and worked on developing lessons incorporating the close reading strategy. The close reading protocol strategy asks students to carefully and purposely read and reread a text. When students close read, they focus on what the author has to say, what the author's purpose is, what the words mean, and what the structure of the text tells us. This approach ensures that students really understand what they've read. The work of this group was guided by CESA 6 and Taylor Baumeister. The work coming out of this group will be transitioned into a building-wide strategy that will be worked on in the 2021-22 school year. StudySync is an integrated print and digital ELA curriculum for grades 6-12 that is used in multiple implementation models, both online and off. An easy-to-use, multimedia-rich curriculum, StudySync brings great literature to life and supports student exploration in the classroom and beyond. This program helps by providing flexible instructional choice for teachers and a guided path towards independent critical thinking and analysis skills for students. ACT Aspire interim assessments were given this fall to help us understand where students were at post spring semester of 2020. This diagnostic assessment helps us identify areas for growth for students. This was our first year using this tool and we plan to keep doing these in the fall for all 9th through 11th grade students. As we grow with our PLCs and RTI, we will be able to process this data regularly and apply the necessary support for students to grow. By the end of the 2020-21 school year, we will increase the total number of students proficient in math by 5% for all students and 10% in our subgroups, as measured by the ACT and the SPIRE. Reveal Math was adopted this year. There are components this program offers from curiosity with mathematical exploration and discovery that deepens conceptual understanding. Understanding with insightful instructional resources to more effectively differentiate and promote a positive student mindset. Possibilities with purposeful technology that creates an active classroom experience. We adopted this in our algebra and geometry classes. Alex Math, the computer-based program, came with our new Revealed Math curriculum. This program can be used in tandem with the classroom to support students both at a remedial and advanced level. It has diagnostic pieces that help teachers identify areas for reinforcement. As we welcome our math intervention this next year, we hope to further utilize this tool to aid students in learning. With the change in curriculum, the math department took the time to develop their power standards for our new curriculum areas. Power standards refer to a subset of learning standards that our teachers have determined to be the highest priority or most important for students to learn. By the end of the 2020-21 school year, we will reduce the amount of overall discipline removals by 25% and 50% in subgroup areas. BDHS administration attended the awesome leading equity seminar this school year. Key leadership takeaways from the seminar that created action this year were conducting a comprehensive school district equity audit, developing a local school district equity plan, and as administrative team, we are using the equity lens as we evaluate our current discipline practices and challenging ourselves to ensure equity. We have had chats with students to gain their perspective and weigh that into our processes at the high school. We have restructured our problem solving team process this year. We meet on a regular basis to address student concerns both behaviorally and academically. We work to create plans for students that are geared to help students maintain engagement with their learning. This team involves members of administration, student services, and teachers and staff. Our core values of perseverance, responsibility, integrity, diversity, and engagement are still a focus at BDHS. This year, the core values team has tackled a variety of topics. One area we have enhanced is student recognition. We continue to do our monthly pride point drawings. We have three dedicated parking spots for students in the month and we are working on a branding campaign to really make our core value, values visible throughout the school. The work of this team is constant and is a valuable piece to moving our culture forward.
vacation and you could have stayed home on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was so much to share that you know I felt the visuals are more powerful than just talking about it. So we've been very fortunate as a high school to operate um, pretty much to full ability with some, you know, as you know, some protocols in place. So it was nice to be able to see things kickstart again uh, with our kids doing a lot of active learning. And as you saw, some of the great work those kids have accomplished, even with an adjusted schedule and year that they've had. Um, the big, the big uh, thing that hit me this year was the city bike rack project. Mm -hmm. I was blown away at the professionalism of our students and the quality of the product that they produced. It, it, it's, it's phenomenal. And our business partners, Brewer Metal and Metalcraft of Mayville, help with supplies, help with the uh, powder coating of the final product. And having that uh, presentation down at the chamber a few weeks ago was, uh, was a great opportunity. And our kids, man, they just were beaming. They were so proud and to show it off and talk about it. And that's really what we want students to get out of doing projects like that. So it was, it was, it was perfect. And as you know, we got a homecoming week. It wasn't the same as normal, but we did most of the traditions that the kids really look forward to. The beaver tails were outstanding this year, <laughs> very creative. Um, the breakout spaces by class decorations were the best that I think any of us have seen in a long time. So. Again, just great to bring those opportunities. And we have prom and graduation and scholarship ceremonies all on the horizon. And I'm excited. It's going to be a fast next three weeks, but it'll be packed with a lot of fun activities, I think. So, any questions for us tonight? Questions? Anybody? That is a lot of talent I mean, that, the, that you showcased. I and mean, even the kids singing the alma mater going down, that was. You know, something you don't typically would address, but I'm glad you did. So, thank you. Gives me chills when I hear those kids yeah. sing that. Yeah. It's, just, it's magical. Good job. I didn't hear any, any bad notes. No. <laughs> <laughs> just me trying to sing it in the background. But no. And Russ, as the parent of two high school students, I say thank you very much. Um, trying to bring some sense of normalcy to their school year has been good. So mm -hmm. thank you. And uh, my team, Mel Gearing, and all our student advisors and uh, class uh, um, what do you call class sponsors have been great and uh, and helping us achieve that too. So thank you. Yeah, and I think another another thing that shows the success of what you guys have accomplished this year is the fact that in all in in the entire presentation, one of the things that stuck out to me was uh, the continuation of uh, school spirit. And in almost everything you guys did in, in, in the video itself, the kids didn't lose that. They maintained that in, in the course of this year. That's, uh, that was surprising and important to see as well. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we'll move on to 9.2, open enrollment requests. Um, I thought that was really nice to see that recap of the year and I'm really proud to be a part of you know that that reflection I look back on my year and um, it's been wonderful and I too thank you for your gesture of um, appreciation it really you know says a lot I'm really proud to be in this district um, so with that I'd like to just um, talk about open enrollment um, knowing that we've got a state statute that allows parents to apply for um, their student to enroll in a district uh, in a school that is outside of their district um, the enrollment period uh, ended on April 30th and when we look at the numbers um, we received 39 applicants um, for students to transfer into the district as compared to 42 last year um, you see the application by breakdown um, uh, by the grades in your chart we received 45 applications for 39 students to transfer out of the district as compared to 48 applicants and 44 students um, in the prior year. So the following recommendation is going to be made. Um, we'd like to approve or make a recommendation for approval of 31 applications for the open enrollment into the district. 
we'd like to make a recommendation to deny four applications um, for students that are in need of special education as we set the numbers back in January. We don't have any space for the programs. Um, we'd also like to deny two applications in regular ed due to space limitations in those grade levels, and then a denial of two applications due to habitual truancy. So overall, the um, approval is recommended for 45 applications for 39 students applying to transfer out of the district. Any questions? Thank you. I make a motion we approve the 45 applications for students in and 39 f applications for students to transfer out of the district. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to approve 45 applicants in and 39 transfer out. No, that's not right. No, that's not right. No, they see it too. That it? 31. Oh, I'm sorry. I just took it off the sheet. Hold on. On the, which one is it? On the top it says 31, on the bottom it says 39. Well, that's for students, the transferring out. 31 students in, and the denials are listed. Oh, I'm sorry, got below. it. 31, okay, I'm sorry, 31 open and rolling in, and 39, and 39 out. going out. We have another second on that? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second then for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right. Thank you. All right, 9.3, we have a resolution authorizing the transfer of funds. Hello, Emory. Hi. <laughs> All right, um, so tonight we're talking about um, our Fund 39 debt, which is our referendum debt. Um, so based on the $48.9 million referendum that was approved in November of 2016, um, we did three separate bond issues. So we did $7 million um, on April 3rd of 2017, um, $31.905 million on May 2nd of 2017, and then $9.995 million um, in April of 2018. So we did that um, timing based on the expenditures of the referendum project. Um, so we, we kind of spaced those out to try to save on interest costs. Um, so each year uh, we levy for funding to make the annual principal and interest payments on that debt. Um, so uh, just a reminder, Fund 39 levy is outside of the revenue limit. Um, so we have been able to levy funding to be used for future payments. So our current fund 39 um, fund balance is $3.3 million. Um, so debt defeasance. So in a debt defeasance, the borrower, which would be um, the district, um, sets aside funds today into an escrow account to cover future debt payments. Um, so the district's bonds are not callable, which means we can't, uh, we can't pay them off. Um, until 2025, 2027, and 2027 respectively for those three separate bond issues on the previous slide. So at that point, um, when they're callable, we would be able to buy back the bonds, um, ending our debt obligation. Um, as another option, at that point, we could also refinance the debt if the interest rates at that time were uh, more favorable than what we had on the original debt. Um, so since our bonds are not yet callable, um, in a debt defeasance, the escrow account that we put the money into would help to make interest payments um, until the point where it could pay off the remaining debt. So um, we've been working with our financial advisor, who is PMA, um, to develop a plan for the defeasance of the last debt issue we did. That was in April of 2018. Um, so under that plan, we would put uh, $2.4 million of the Fund 39 fund balance into an escrow account. So while it's in the escrow account, um, it would earn interest in a very low risk investment, basically a money market account. Um, then it would pay off part of the interest owed each year until the year 2037, 
um, at which point the escrow account would be able to pay off the remaining principal and accrued interest. Um, so this is a, a before and after um, the defeasance. So uh, just to highlight, it shows you the calendar year going down the left side. Um, the pieces that are highlighted in green, those are principal payments. Um, and then uh, the interest payments you can see um, next to that. So if you look at the far right column, the escrow account um, would essentially pay off $81,200 of interest each year um, until you got to the year 2037. Um, and then what's in that escrow account would be able to pay off part of that year's principal interest payment and all of the 2038 um, principal payment and then um, whatever um, interest was still accrued on that 2037 payment. So the benefits of doing the debt defeasance, so it's a reduction in future Fund 39 payments. Um, so payments that the district would make um, <coughs> largely because the escrow account is making it. So we'd see a reduction of um, $3,361,400 there would be a net fund 39 savings. So that would actually save the district in total cost of almost a million dollars. Um, and then another uh, positive for us would be putting the money into the escrow account um, has a similar effect to paying off that future debt. So it takes that liability off of our balance sheet. Um, and because we would be expensing that payment um, that $2.4 million that's going into the escrow account, that would be a payment made in this fiscal year. Um, that would count as a shared cost for the purpose of determining next year's state equalization aid. So when the state calculates equalization aid, shared cost is, is one of the main calculations in that factor. Um, so this would increase our shared cost, um, which will lead to additional equalization aid for next year. Um, we don't know exactly how much yet um, because the state budget still being largely undetermined and our shared cost um, and what we get for aid also depends on every other district's shared cost. So we're not sure exactly what that could be, um, but it, it could be about half a million dollars in additional aid. So then looking forward, um, if we wanted to, we could utilize a debt defeasance strategy in future years. Um, similar, to, similar to this, if we continue to um, levy additional resources for Fund 39. So this would allow us to continue to pay down our longest term debt um, to maximize interest savings and decrease the number of years needed to pay back existing debt obligation. Um, and then in addition, if we decided to issue additional future debt, um, having a lower total debt obligation would look good for us and it could also improve our bond ratings, um, which we need to get rated every time that we issue debt. So that could help us there too. Any questions? Just one quick question, Anne-Marie. Yep. What actually are the resources that make up Fund 39? So Fund 39, um, so that's the money that we levy each year in order to make those principal and interest payments. Interest payments. Yep. Can you debt defeasance with anything other than principal 39 for any other debt or as specific to um, referendum debt? We could. Um, we, don't, we don't have existing resources to be able to do that. We're, we're really fortunate right now that we have this additional fund balance there to to be able to do that, um, but potentially you could, yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Amory? If not, I would look for <coughs> a motion, probably similar to what's printed in the agenda, a 9.3 motion to approve resolution. I move for approval of the resolution to transfer funds to establish the escrow account with respect to and the def 
defeasance of certain of general obligation school building and improvement bonds series 2018 dated april 2nd 2018. second all right we have a motion a second then and we will need a roll call vote please Mark yes 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 Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, that brings up Mr. DiStefano, return to school plan update. Hello. All right, we are moving, so that's good. A um, little update on our monitoring. We continue to monitor um, as we have throughout the entire year, so we have our weekly meetings with uh, Dodge County Health Department, area superintendents. Uh, the county remains in phase two. Um, the Harvard um, designation is uh, considered yellow. Um, the monitoring the district boundary report, so again, within the district boundary itself, not reflective of our district population, students and staff, but the entire boundary area that represents the district, all of the population in that, our average daily increase as of the 7th was 1.86 cases. Um, if you look back in the three months prior, uh, you see that that is relatively stable. Um, February 5th, it was 2.5. And then the two months following in March and April, it was 1.7. We continue to also publish our weekly district COVID-19 numbers on our website. Uh, looking at student and staff cases in quarantines, you'll see that the cases have maintained relatively stable and uh, low number. Uh, we did have a, have a few more cases pop up over the last, oh, probably three to four weeks. Um, and then you'll look on the uh, quarantine side and you will see uh, that second number is not accurate, or the last number, by the way, is not accurate. Um, but you'll see that quarantine numbers did rise a little bit from that, but case numbers have stayed relatively low consistent with what we've seen from that late winter and on. As far as our current academic instruction model, we always provide an update on this. Uh, we have had no change since the last time that we have met. So five days, 4K through five, uh, four days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for 612. And the uh, families that are taking advantage of the virtual option, the percentage of participation has not changed. And I am not recommending any changes for the remainder of the year with the model that we have in place. As far as a quarantine um, update, a few things on this. So first, I, I really want to take a moment to continue to thank our nurses for their continued work. As, as you know, uh, they are a point contact and resource for us. They are the direct nexus with the Dodge County Health Department when we're navigating any types of situations. And they are part of that initial communication change and oftentimes are the bearers of, of news that maybe is not very positive. Uh, not an easy task. And uh, they are tangible, so they receive a lot of feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. So I wanna thank them. Um, our district continues to follow 14-day quarantine for close contact of confirmed positive cases. Um, there have been a number of conversations regarding protocols and prospective future protocols in the past two weeks. Actually, those, um, those started at the county level. Um, and there have been some other conversations outside of our county, but very close, i.e. Fond du Lac County, uh, that have also helped uh, spark some additional conversations in that arena. Um, we are interested in moving to a 14-day quarantine. So we're in a 14-day basically standard quarantine at this point in time, but a 14-day quarantine that would allow for return after 10 days of quarantine with a negative PCR test. So in other words, students could return after day 10 if district medical staff received confirmation of a negative PCR test. And the PCR test is really the standard relative to tests to identify whether or not there is COVID present. Um, in a patient, um, it's not, it's not the, the quick or the rapid test. The PCR test is that, um, I think it's pol is it polymer, polymerase chain reaction. I should remember this from my biology days, but um, it's essentially looking for a specific genetic material that's reflective of that virus. Um, update part two, there <coughs> have been some other districts that have provided this option um, in the recent past, and they have indicated that that it is working well. Um, the majority of districts 
have continued with a 14 day. Um, just a little bit of a snapshot. So if I looked at uh, sampling of 17 districts representing the Badger Conference as well as our immediate region. Um, and then I also threw Marshfield School District in there uh, just for appropriate flavor. But 11 of those, including Marshfield, have stuck with a 14-day quarantine. Um, but six of those have moved to that 10-day model. And they, have, they would represent that it, that has been successful and they have not seen any increase in spread or concern relative to using a 10-day option so long as there was a negative PCR test confirming um, as such. The advantage to this and the move at this point in time uh, would allow students to return sooner and miss less school activities, experiences, et cetera. Um, conversations and projections would suggest just a little bit of a foreshadow that the norm is likely gonna be a flat 10 day with no PCR when we look out a few more months, um, as long as the other projections and trends relative to vaccination and case frequency continue as they have. I have spoken with our medical staff, our nurses, as well as the district's medical advisor, and they would support that adjustment of continuing with a 14-day quarantine, but allowing for a 10-day option as long as there was a negative PCR test. Um, activities and facilities. So uh, spring sports season is underway. Our teams are following WIAA guidelines. If there are unique circumstances to navigate, depending on where our students are playing, the coaches uh, work with Melissa Gearing and Melissa works with the athletic directors and we do our best to honor the different nuances that our student athletes might experience. But our grounding foundation is um, in the WIAA guidelines themselves. Uh, we are going to be having a modified prom event on the 15th of May for our students. It is an indoor-outdoor event. So my understanding, and I'm going to get ahead now, I think, is that uh, the Grand March will be indoors, and um, they will move uh, outside under a large but very classy canopy-like tent to experience uh, their music and dance, I'm sure. Uh, BDHS Senior Award Scholarship Night is on the 19th. Uh, that will be held in the field house. That will be a socially distanced and masked event. Uh, graduation is planned for the 28th and will likely be in the field house. Uh, we have reviewed that with the health, the health department. Uh, we expect um, no less than four tickets uh, per graduate. That works really well when we look at capacity and spacing in there. It's a little bit more of a controlled environment. We are prepared if things were to change for some reason or we would have to go outside. Um, so long as we had a little notice, I'm sure Pete and his crew could put that together um, if necessary. But right now it does look like the field house will be an appropriate venue that we can use. And then the graduation for DSLA is on everybody's calendar as well. And that would be June 2nd. That's a Tuesday after Memorial Day, and that will be in the high school auditorium. <clears throat> Masking update. Uh, our health department has indicated that it is likely to support a modifi modified masking protocols for summer school. Uh, currently, uh, I don't know how many people who are watching this know this, but two districts in Dodge County are considered quote unquote mask optional. Um, I reference that separately because there's a different use of the, of the terms. Most of what people have probably seen or read it references mask optional. I don't think that that's necessarily reflective of, of exactly what is happening in those districts or what would happen in our district at this point in time. Um, <clears throat> there are more opportunities to remove masks um, while indoors in certain settings um, beginning in summer school, or we are looking for more opportunities to remove masks while indoors in certain settings. Uh, while on buses during entry and exit, including any congregated transition times, um, we would likely require masking. Uh, during other times when social distancing can be more effectively maintained, students or staff will be able to remove their masks if we went to a modified masking model. Some considerations regarding uh, the prospect of modified masking. Vaccinations have and continue to be readily available. Our most vulnerable populations um, if they wanted, have been able to um, access the vaccine. Um, quarantine protocols will continue to evolve and a 10 day option increases opportunities for students and a prospective move to modified masking requirements during summer school 
provides a smaller and more controlled environment to take a next step. So what I'm asking for this evening is for the board to consider approving the district's 14-day quarantine protocol um, to allow for a return after 10 days with a negative PCR test and provide me with the flexibility to adjust quarantine protocols upon consultation and review with health department officials and district medical staff. And then also approve the district moving to a modified masking model as early as June 14th with specified guidelines in place that may require masking in specific indoor venues or events and allow the superintendent to adjust and modify masking protocols upon consultation and review with health department officials and district medical staff. Questions, comments? So when you say mask optional though, it's just gonna, we're gonna be giving them opportunities to take their mask off. It's not going to be, I'm, X amount of kid, I don't want to wear a Correct. mask. Correct. So the standard, and that's why we will be very deliberate um, in not using the term mask optional as kind of our foundational term. It's modified masking protocols. So masks are still required by all students. Uh, they have to have a mask. There are certain times when they're going to need to be required to have it on. And there are some times indoors in controlled environments. Um, where socially distant, social distancing can be more appropriately maintained, whereby they could remove the mask at that time. So the, the use of the term mask optional, I think for, for the purposes of what we're doing, as well as what other districts are doing or planning on doing, um, isn't really an accurate term. And I know it's somewhat semantics, but I think people hear the term mask optional and they think that they don't need to have a mask. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. I think I'm okay with it. I mean, it's another step forward. We're moving forward at yeah. gradual. As long as we're in constant contact with the health department and our district medical staff, like yeah, then I, I really don't see a, an issue with these two recommendations at all. Do you see the frequency of the meetings changing at all? The frequency of the meetings with the health department? Yeah. Um, I think once we get into summer, I mean, I can see you know that going down to maybe once or twice a month for a period of time, but I would anticipate as we kick back up with the school year, depending on where things are at, we're gonna meet weekly again. It's a good touch base. Um, you know, through the conversations, I was able to confirm, you know, that every other district in the county is planning on going to some type of modified masking protocol for the, for the summer. They either have taken action to do so, or they're actually looking to take action this week for planning purposes relative to that. Um, that's also where we found out through those meetings that two of the districts had moved to um, what they dubbed as, as mass optional already, um, and that had kind of flown under the radar and wasn't necessarily covered uh, by anybody. But we're not, and I want to make it really clear, we're not changing any of our protocols right now through the remainder of the year. And if the board were to take action, the reference is as early as June 14th, and there's still additional conversations with the health department that would have to take place for us to identify what those protocols would be. So the, does quarantining and the definition of a close contact, that's the same regardless of if a person's vaccinated or not? No. So quarantine requirements for somebody who's vaccinated, uh, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. Okay. Right. So the other thing that's, that's happening right now, and one of the reasons why you see that the, that the motions I'm, I'm asking for, the, the action that I'm asking for, provide some additional flexibility to work through some of the quarantine, the protocols associated with that, which also includes co close contact distinction. Um, I don't see it happening in the very immediate future, but I, I see it happening at some point in time, um, is actually a little bit of a model that some of you may have heard is coming out of um, Fond du Lac County and uh, what they're doing with that is if they can confirm that individuals were masked during the whole time of the contact, um, they're not quarantining them. So they've made a move to that as a county. Our, our health department has not adopted that yet. Um, Fond du Lac County is still on a, I'll say a little bit of an island with that, but that is gaining um, a lot of energy and desire to look at that because one of the things that it does is it does actually validate the effectiveness of masking. 
I just wanted to ask because I don't think you'd ever said that. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So, if our kids are vaccinated, they do or they don't 14 day quarantine right now. Then, if kids are vaccinated, they don't have to quarantine. If they're two weeks past, if, right. if it's a two shot sequence, two it has shots. to be two full weeks beyond okay. that. Mm -hmm. Do we have a ballpark number of how many kids we have that are vaccinated or no? I do not. So, Mark, do we have guidelines from either the county health department or our own nursing staff on when they would accept a negative test result being administered? So, for example, if someone goes on a quarantine but goes to get a test the day that they begin their quarantine and it's negative, right. are we going to accept that test or is there going to be a timeline for when they need to be tested after their exposure? It has to be on or beyond day six. Okay. For a negative PCR mm -hmm. test. And that actually would align with, so if you look at, if you look at, even today, if you pull it up, if you look at CDC recommendations, um, you know, it'll reference a 14 day as a recommendation and then it'll provide some other options. We also have to remember that some of those options came out early. We actually talked about them in January. Those came out early and they had more to do with um, employers getting employees back than anything. Um, so, and that's where it showed some of the, the different options that were available. Within the options that are available um, and the options that we're talking about, the 10 day, it references the specific date and so would we relative to when a PCR test would need to be done. Um, and then whether or not that would then be accepted. So if they got it done too soon, then that wouldn't, they'd have to get it done again. Okay. Essentially. So that, <clears throat> the, the option for the PCR test to reduce the four days would be available upon approval? Or is there a certain date by which we would change that? I would say as soon as it was approved. Okay. Other questions, comments? And again, just to reiterate, um, did talk through this, um, through all of this actually with, with our nursing staff last week. Um, and then our nurses have a direct line of communication, mm -hmm. did speak with our uh, our medical advisor, um, the our, our medical our medical advisor is a very very warm to um, the first, which is the 14 day protocol, and the 10 days um, relative to modified masking. I would say that um, she thinks we need to continue to work very closely with the health department, and if we are providing exceptions this summer. Um, you know, that we are really taking into account the controlled nature of that environment and whether or not there is appropriate distancing mm -hmm. in that environment. Well, I, I know that the CDC has recently come out to say that uh, COVID is more active indoors now again with the, if you don't have the right ventilation and stuff. So that, mm -hmm you know, kind of makes the masking even more important in certain circumstances that way. I did also run the numbers um, with Ashley regarding um, some of our programming for the summer. So, I mean, there are a number of classes that we will run that are smaller mm -hmm. in size and the size of the rooms would probably allow for some of that. The other thing with a lot of the programming she has and will continue to encourage um, some of that learning and some of those things that take place outside where it's appropriate. Right. Um, so all the other preventative protocols that we have in place would would, be, would continue. Mm -hmm. I think a continuation of the adjustment to the protocols is important. I think a continuation to move forward in that direction um, from a masking standpoint is important. It's not like we're taking, you know, jumps and leaps forward, but we're taking steps, I think, in the right direction. I don't necessarily think it's good to be the first one to make huge changes and uh, definitely not the last one to, to fall behind. Um, but I think I like, I like the uh, actions that are recommended um, as we sit, so. 
Well, I'm going to move that we approve the district's 14-day quarantine protocol to allow for return after 10 days with a negative PSR test and provide the superintendent the flexibility to adjust quarantine protocols upon consultation and review with the health department officials and district medical staff. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to... <laughs> for the first bulleted item, I won't read the whole. <laughs> I won't read the whole thing again. Um, all those in favor? All right. Aye. All those not, same sign. All right. A motion on the second, please. I will also approve. May I also move that we approve the district moving to a modified mass a modified masking model as early as June fourteenth, with specific guidelines in place that may require masking in specified indoor venues. Or events and allow the superintendent to adjust and modify masking protocols upon consultation and review with health department officials and district medical staff. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to approve the second start item. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right, those recommendations are approved. Thank you. All right, 9.5, recognitions. Anybody got recognitions? Um, today I have a recognition for the cast, crew, and staff of the high school play Almost Maine. I was fortunate enough to see the opening night and the closing Sunday afternoon and um, the socially distant production that included essentially two students on stage for the vast majority of the play at, e at any given time, uh, wearing masks, of course, was very interesting <laughs> and uh, was a good choice for this year's production. So I wanted to thank um, the cast, the crew, and all of our staff that made that possible for the students to have a production of the play this year. Awesome, thank you. I'd like to recognize the uh, high school orchestra kids um, the concert was the other night. I know Tony was there, and uh, it was an excellent concert. It was nice to see that in person. And also the Beaverdam FFA kids, they had their annual awards banquet last Wednesday night also. So it was a nice banquet. So I want to recognize those two groups of kids. You stole my thunder. I wanted to recognize the orchestra kids, too. They were fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Phantom of the Opera was awesome, and especially because it's like, a song that you recognize when you hear it, but you couldn't really call it out otherwise. So it was amazing to hear and how, how good they were at it. It was it was really, really good. Especially my daughter's in ninth grade and she was so terrible before ninth grade. So it was great. Um, the other one is the staff between lunches and the people that clean. I came with the fire department and these kids are animals. And it was amazing how much work they did in the tiny amount of time they had between the three lunches. So props to them, that was pretty impressive. So I have one also. Uh, the high school has had a student that's been selected for the Wisconsin Agriculture Youth Council. Um, there are 15 high, Wisconsin high school seniors that are selected from all of the students that apply for those positions. Uh, Bella Krause was selected and she will spend this year serving on it. The purpose of it is to encourage young people to engage with state government and increase their awareness of the Department of Agricultural Trade and Consumer Protection's interactions with Wisconsin's agriculture industry. And they serve a one-year term. And it's an honor for both the Krause family and for our high school ag department to have a student selected for that. So props mm -hmm. to them. Excellent. That's awesome. awesome. And Others? I just, um, I know we've, we've emailed back and forth about this one, but I want to at this meeting recognized Melissa Gehring. She had been uh, recognized as the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association District 6 Athletic Director of the Year. And so that's a <laughs> great reflection on, on Mill and, nice. and everything that, that uh, you know, she does for, for all the athletes and and the uh, activities mm -hmm. in, in the district, so. I would just on uh, behalf of the board, I know that uh, we've heard some uh, thank yous tonight um, for some sediments that we provided for staff. And uh, we have some letters and cards that have went around uh, tonight. And uh, I have a 
whole bunch of more thank yous on here. So I just wanted to make sure that staff uh, knew <clears throat> that those are well received and uh, appreciate it very much, the feedback and the thank you. Others? Um, just want to reiterate thanks for the, uh, for the staff and specifically also the administration uh, over the next few weeks. A lot of energy, a lot of stress, a lot of problem solving to navigate. So I want to thank everybody in advance. And um, it's a big deal. This time of year is very exciting. Uh, there's a lot of energy, a lot of emotion with it, but um, the outcome is wonderful. So keep up the good work. Um, and then, last but certainly not least, um, Gary Spielman, it is official. <laughs> Wasby has printed it. The official 30 years of service um, for the school board here in Beaver Dam. So on behalf of the district and the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, I'd like to congratulate you on 30 years of service. Yes. Was it a one-room schoolhouse? Horse <laughs> <laughs> <First> drum, yeah. <laughs> I think Gary, did you? Uh, you started, I think, about the year I was born. <laughs> no, I just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nice track. Uh, uh, what are friends for, right, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> We're still glad to have you. <laughs> All right, others. All right, we will move on. Uh, reports by the board. We have our student rep and I believe a guest uh, that are going to join us uh, virtually. So we'll let Mary figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 
So um, I was like, yes, I fill out a form and get approved, and I take it, but it looks like we are going to be having some outside guests join us at prom this year. And then after that, shortly after four days after on that Wednesday, I believe it is the Wednesday the 19th. Don't quote me on that. We have the awards for our seniors and also the scholarship program that night. It'll be held in the field house. And students will be receiving their awards, and they're also allowed to have guests. Um, it'll be live streamed for those who aren't able to attend in person. And then wrapping up this month, on the 28th, that Friday, we will be having graduation at 7 o'clock. Um, students will be allowed to have a minimum of four tickets for guests to come, and it looks like it will be held in the field house. Um, last year it's held outside, but we're hoping to move it back into the field house. And that is what I have for tonight. So thank you everyone, and it's been a great school year working with you. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. So Abby, I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let you introduce Carter. Um, but afterwards, afterwards, I want you to stay on board. Um, I got a little bit of something for you as well. So we'll let Carter Carter go first. Okay, I think I'm going. Is everything okay, guys? Yep. 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 Awesome. So, uh, hello. I'm Carter Hughes. I am 8th uh, grade, Fugitive Middle School. Um, and I'm currently also the Vice President at State Level for the Wisconsin Association of Student Councils. Uh, they're based out of Madison, Wisconsin, and I joined back in November. So, uh, I guess I can start by telling you guys just a bit about the organization and what they do, what they represent. So. Uh, the WAC is a combination of all Wisconsin student councils, um, sort of into a group. Um, think of it as like the NFL compared to different colleges. They all kind of group together to form one big deal. So that's sort of, you know, sort of the top of the charts. So I joined them like I said in November after being elected into my position. Although it wasn't as simple as it seems, as to start, I had to go through a simple election for my region. Now, I could name all six counties, but to summarize, it is called the capital region because it involves Dane County, Dutch County, I believe Green and Rock County, and two others, which I cannot remember at this moment. But to summarize, it is six uh, different counties, and you have to win in that group of six counties. Well, I didn't even know about this because we were going into what we call a state conference. It is where um, many different schools all gather together and we sort of talk to student council. It's like a meeting of all the student councils from all around the state. Um, due to COVID, it's all virtual. Or I can all get a giant school bus trip and get to the Saturday school, perhaps the our student council. And we get there over and we get to uh, have fun. Usually we have a meeting there. Or some talk and inspirational speaker. Um, and then we move on and talk about elections, we talk about leadership, we share, uh, we share ideas for fundraising uh, for all school districts. Um, just an overall fun event. And I remember getting an email from um, uh, my uh, student council advisor, Ms. Brady, Anna Brady. And I read through the email at the bottom and talked about these elections. And I got very curious. So, I went in, and sure enough, you have to fill out a, a form, and you have, uh, you have to get your principal to sign on it, you have to get your advisor to sign on it, your parents, you have to put it down your resume. It's basically like getting a job. You have to put a lot of different information in. So after I put in all this information, I ran for my state level. After running, we had to sit through a pain Hey, the very sweaty thing is here. I wonder if I'm going to have to do this or not because you know you're sweating blows, you don't know if you're going to get it or not. And there's three different levels for you to get in. The first is secretary, which isn't the highest, but it's kind of like a participation award. Hey, you got it. Congratulations. Now you can sit and you can watch as everyone else there takes over and you can voice your opinion here or there. And it's sort of like the, the lowest level you can. Then there's vice president, which is similar to secretary. Um, I guess the only real bonus being vice president, you can provide that you beat the secretary. Um, like I said, a lot of it is more just you're getting on to a member. 
member, but the best role, the role I got, was president in my region. Because when you're president, you get all the benefits of vice president and secretary, but then you also get an additional benefit of you can run to be on what we call the executive committee. The executive committee is comprised of five positions, a president and a vice president for the high school and middle school levels, and then you also have a, I believe it's called chief of staff, and they sort of are like a backbone. You know, they sort of like kind of help out here and there. If someone's gone, they'll jump in. They kind of help out with our advisor, which used to be in the shop of Roth. You're going to say, I got a new one, Peggy Mullenkamp. Um, so there's those five positions. Now, to be the chief of staff, you can only do high school, and I believe you have to have a certain amount of years of experience. So I ran at middle school level. Um, I was shocked that I made it this far early in the year. I became president of my student council, which was a big accomplishment for me. But after I became president of this, the sky was the limit, and I just can't find <laughs> money. My parents had to make jokes, even saying X step was president of the United States. And I said, Whoa, whoa, let's not get crazy here. Mayor comes first. <laughs> <laughs> but after running, it became another uh, sort of meeting between, it as a state conference where all of them meet together, except everyone was comprised of just the Association of Student Councils, the NBAC. So, I sat in another meeting where Sweat was building up on my chair, and probably left the park on my seat, um, because, you know, you're in this big situation. So, after, after hearing my name called for Vice President, I was still very, very, very honored. So, after you get uh, called up as Vice President, you're sort of just there and they welcome you in and you know you just kind of sit there and wonder well wonder what comes next well generally a couple days later they say welcome and then they kind of explain your roles they kind of you do kind of learn about what it is to be and then they go more in depth to get in a position um so to be vice president is to represent uh sort of your grade level at uh state at anything really to be vice president is to represent middle school overall. And it's really an honor to be at this level. And I have to say the president is doing an amazing job. I think she is from a middle school around the Milwaukee area. Like I said, she's great. Her name is uh, Shreya Venekarmani. I probably butchered that name so many times I couldn't count. And I constantly have to apologize to her for it, but I probably have done it here tonight as well. But. In the end, she's a great president. I'm honored to be her vice president. So, um, I guess moving on to what I do as vice president. Um, you start, I go to tons of meetings, and I constantly meet with boards. Um, I have to say my first big event was the Wisconsin School Convention, something like that. I, I, let's see, I can't remember the name. I happened back in February, and I was on a panel with a couple of adults. We had a couple of kids on there, and we were talking about student voice. And I mean, I uh, went in there, and our leader just said, okay, here's a script of a couple of things. Uh, you're just going to read them off, and then afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A. And you're a student, you should know the answers. And I said, okay, hope they're not too complicated. So we got on there, we sat down, we were in this big meeting, very stressful, lots of people. And uh, we had a bit of connection issues, but after a good run of, run of the meeting, um, we stopped for a minute and realized that lots of people were disconnecting. That was really worrying because in the end, when we got to the Q&A part, I was one of only two kids on there, so you can bet I had a big storm coming after me and being a new, a new kid in the situation. I was like, okay, here we go. This is time to kind of warm up. The engine's running, get myself ready for this next year. So it was me and I believe the high school president, Dylan Cup. And we sat through many questions. We answered as best as we could. We went back and forth. And, um, you know, we kind of just started out with this big events and sort of um, got used to being a part of this student council and representing Wisconsin as a student council. And uh, that was sort of the big first event we got done. And uh, directly after we had this first event done, I got an email that shocked me, absolutely shocked me. It was our leader at the time, Sean Pop, emailing me saying, hey guys, guess who you've seen of me? The New York Times. And I said, okay, I come over here April, I don't know if she's just 
It's just a degree. Calendar should be a way for who they is, you know, I'm trying to think why well, she say this, but she can find me fine. Turns out they actually did, and they wanted an interview with uh, us, and I was shocked. It's the first year, and all the stuff is out of me. It, I mean, program may be bad, but I had a great year. I have to say, it was, it's just been amazing. Just, I keep, like I said, I keep getting so much, so much is just happening in the past year, I'm so thankful. Moving we'll on, um, spoiler alert, never actually did an interview with the New York Times yet, but was contacted by them and said they, um, they found, well, they, they interviewed one person, then they got caught up with a lot of other stories, and now they're going to keep me in touch or work with you to over. So it's still in there, still in the books, but still so far we've been um, do that. And right now, I believe we're in the midst of a summer camp, we have a summer camp program. Uh, where kids, uh, all the time can come to this camp and he just doesn't know about we but there's some activities um, all throughout. Uh, I can sign up maybe in a theater for the middle of the level due to how I am and the training. So, um, I'm trying to think if we don't have any other events as of recent, besides a lot of meetings and a conference. Um, I can't really think of much to right now, but uh, yeah, I guess just to summarize what I do is I lead and I show, um, I just show, I guess it, it's, a very, it's a very hard job to explain on that, I can say that. Um, I think I, I, I really need to do is I show leadership at a state level, I represent, I not only program, I also represent my school, I represent my council, I represent pretty much everything that is about me. I am, I am the representative of Wisconsin, who is a school level. And while I may not be president, I still have the exact same sort of powers. The only thing that's different about being a president, the president generally is the guy who's in the public first, and then always have the public president. I'm still called up always. So really, I am tasked with the job of representing the school, the district, this area, and I'm tasked with it. It's a, it's a heavy way, but Right now, during this, I'm going to have to hold the way to the wall. Um, yeah. I guess, uh, if you guys want to move on to, uh, if you guys want to do a Q&A, um, if you can have that, I think you're going to have, uh, explain myself to you all. Yeah, Carter, Carter, thank you very much for, uh, for your, uh, presentation. Um, I know that, uh, uh, based on what you've told us, I think, uh, the middle school and Beaver Dam are glad to have you as a represent, uh, representing us. I think the state of Wisconsin is glad to have you representing the state. Um, I'm amazed by how much you've learned in the course of this year in your uh, enthusiasm and involvement in uh, student governments. So I appreciate that as well. And with that, I will open it up to any other other board members that would like to ask any questions. Carter, I just want to comment. Um, it was the Wisconsin Association of School Board Convention that you appeared at. And I did hear your presentation at that. And you were very good, great representative for Beaver Dam. And I, I uh, applaud your enthusiasm. I really, uh, keep it up and I think you'll go far. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, Carter. Any other comments by anybody? All right, awesome job, Carter. Thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. See you guys. See you. Thank you very much. Hey, Abby, you still on there? Come on back to us. I am here. So, Abby, if you remember uh, coming into the school year, um, you, uh, you became our first representative on the uh, board. And it was something the board thought about for a while. Um, and we actually developed a policy around it, basically acknowledging the important contributions students can make of the governments and schools. The board believed that student participation on the board could better provide understanding and insights into the concerns of students. And I think during the course of this year, uh, you did an excellent job of, of uh, supporting that and telling us uh, what the students were thinking and sharing with us the student voice. Um, on behalf of the school board, um, and then on behalf of uh, Superintendent Stefano, I want to congratulate you on your upcoming graduation. Uh, we thank you for your board involvement. 
It's been a privilege having you on the board, and I hope you were able to get out of your involvement as much as we got out of having you join us and be with us. So again, thank you very much for your involvement this year. Appreciate it, and congratulations, and good luck at your graduation. And also, I do have a token of our appreciation. I'm gonna provide that to Mr. DeStefano tonight. Um, I was hoping to be able to provide that to you in person, but I trust Mr. DeStefano will get that to you. It's a little token of our gratitude and appreciation. And again, thank you very much for joining us and being our first student rep uh, for the school board. Appreciate it. Any last comments anybody else has for Abby? I would like to echo those sentiments. I think you've been fantastic. It's been such a great asset having you here and hearing from the student's perspective. It's, a, it's an insight that we didn't get previously and I, I truly appreciate everything that you brought to the table, especially sitting through hours and hours of meetings. <laughs> and you, you've been amazing. So thank you so much. Uh, whoever steps in after you, it's gonna be tough to fill your shoes. Especially when you go into closed session and you're still around yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good, best, of, best, best of luck to you, Abby. It was a pleasure serving you on the board. Abby, good luck in Memphis, and uh, go visit Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Abby. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. That moves us on to 10.2, Operations Committee. All right, Operations Committee met April 26th. Um, members were present, committee members were present in person or virtually. Uh, Dr. White, uh, Director of Human Resources, presented adjustments regarding the staff handbooks. Uh, the adjustment, adjustments include consistent and current language post Act 10 emergency school closures and support staff work impact, simplifying the language layoff, sorry, the layoff language, earning of personal days, compensation for period substitution and substitute shortages. The adjustments were shared with um, the district staff advisory team. Uh, I think a couple of times they were available to provide some feedback and input. Uh, the BDAA leadership substitute teacher committee and the administrative team for feedback the updated handbooks will be presented at the regular monthly board meeting in June. Uh, the second item that was on our agenda revolved around the Fund 39 debt and payment um, possibilities that we approved already earlier tonight, discussed and approved. Um, our third item, uh, Mr. Warwick, our district facility and safety officer, provided an update and an overview of the five-year facility plan and the summer maintenance projects. Um, as we know, due to the increased cost of the Jefferson Elementary School project, some of the facility projects for this year have been either delayed or scaled back um, to fit. Uh, he provided some information regarding the projects and work for each district building um, and the year it is planned for completion. Love his graphs and the spreadsheets. They mm -hmm. come in very handy. Uh, he reminded us and explained that the plan is a living document as we learned from our Jefferson building, things come up and we need to adjust. And it's always, always meant that we continue to look five years ahead. Um, the plans for the high school athletic fields were shared and the work has started and is scheduled to be completed later this summer. Um, Mr. Peters, our district assessment and technology officer, then next presented an update on elementary enrollment for the 2020, tw excuse me, the 2021, 2022 school year. And uh, he let us know that a group of administrators have been reviewing ways to have elementary students attend their neighborhood schools. That is one of the goals. Um, and also to balance class sizes um, across the district. And to, he, he sh shared some data with us, uh, the district map, which kind of outlined current um, elementary school borders. Uh, we took a look at the current class sizes as well as projections, which those of us at the committee meeting could see that there were a couple of school buildings that were going to have larger class sizes and other school buildings were going to have smaller class sizes. Uh, he talked a little bit about um, a goal of, the goals were to provide every student that opportunity to attend their neighborhood school to balance those class sizes. Um, and that would include 
all students. So if you were a special ed student, you would, you would get those services in your neighborhood school, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is not always the case at this point in time. Correct. So they're also looking at ways to be able to provide that. Um, the plan is to continue to gather data as well as input uh, from many groups outside of the current staff looking at it. And I know that he's just dying to answer any additional questions you might have. <laughs> I think Mr. Peters is going to provide some um, additional context just to uh, reground right. us and make sure other people that may not have had the opportunity to participate or um, sit in on the operations committee are uh, completely aware of, of um, the elementary enrollment update specifically. So go ahead, Mr. Peters. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for letting me be here. And Bev, thank you for that summary. I do just want to provide a, a little bit more context for the full board uh, moving forward regarding elementary enrollment. So uh, highlighting what, what Bev already talked about, as we think about elementary enrollment, we really want to focus on trying to provide every student the opportunity to attend their neighborhood school, and we do want to try to balance class sizes across our five elementary schools. Past practice has been that most of our students do attend their neighborhood school. However, due to class size limits, which is one of the pieces that we have used with SAGE funding, which turned into achievement gap reduction funding uh, at Jefferson, Lincoln, and Washington in kindergarten through third grade, we have moved students to areas that were not their home school. Traditionally, parents have been able to request alternative placements to a different neighborhood school as well. For example, if a, a student lived in the Lincoln area and they wanted to attend Jefferson, we've had an application process for that. And traditionally, we've had specialized programs for different sets of students with IPs at different elementary buildings. So moving forward, uh, at some point in the future, we want to get to the, the point where, quote unquote, all students can attend their neighborhood school. This coming year, we are going to be using the coaching model uh, within the achievement gap reduction uh, funding to use coaching instead of the class size limits at K3 in those buildings. We will still have a means for parents to request alternative placements at a different elementary school because there's always uh, unique situations that have those needs. <coughs> and moving forward, we want to continue to expand the continuum of special education services at all of our elementary buildings so students with IEPs can so that students with IEPs can attend their neighborhood school. So as we look into enrollment moving into 2122, a couple mm -hmm. things uh, we are seeing. First of all, Lincoln Elementary has smaller than typical class sizes across uh, a number of grade levels. Prairie View has a few larger class sizes across some of the grade levels. And then we noticed that Wilson's kindergarten class is uh, a little bit larger than what we would typically uh, hope for for a kindergarten, kindergarten room. So here's what we're looking at moving forward, potentially. Uh, the, the potential of offering kindergarten Wilson families a choice to attend Washington. Uh, that's been past practice at some different occasions where we've had a mm -hmm. little bit larger group. Um, and I expect that will be something that will be offered up to the Wilson kindergarten families. The other thing that we're looking at is we're exploring a potential boundary change between Prairie View and Lincoln. <clears throat> so this boundary change focuses on the, the area between East Industrial Drive and Knopf Drive. I'd just like to highlight that for us. So starting with a, a pretty high view, this tannish, grayish area would be what you'd consider Prairie View boundary area, and the green would be Lincoln. So this area that's nearly fully encompassed by the circle is that the area we're talking about. I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit more. So this is Knopf Drive, this is East Industrial. So the residential area within this kind of trapezoidish shape is the area that we are looking at as a potential boundary change, changing that from Prairie View neighborhood school area to a Lincoln neighborhood school area. So 
So what does that impact? Right now, for students that will be in our, our elementary schools for next school year, it impacts 28 students. You can see that the kindergarten, first grade, and fourth grade are highlighted there. Uh, those are some areas at Prairie View that have a little bit larger class size. So you can see the students at each grade level, and you can see if we did do a boundary change, uh, the impact it would have on Lincoln's enrollment for next year, Prairie View's enrollment for next year, and then there we have a couple students in the area, in that area that are attending Washington and Wilson as well. So it's 28 students, I believe it's 21 families uh, total in that residential area. So just some next steps, uh, both written and electronic communication has gone to the families the, of elementary students that reside in that area. We have set up two different opportunities for the families uh, of elementary students in that area to, to meet with administration. One is this week, Wednesday, and next mm -hmm. is the following Monday, I believe. Correct. And then we're gonna just listen, uh, share some insights, gain some insights from them, and then if needed, uh, if we think that we're gonna pursue this further, uh, there would be a potential recommendation coming to the board meeting in June. So that's a quick summary of elementary enrollment and what we talked about at operations. Are there any questions related to this? I think, um, I think moving forward, obviously boundary changes are never popular, but uh, we need to make sure we, we keep in line with our projected possible population in our elementary schools and where we see opportunities for improvement to make sure that we don't have too high a sizes of class sizes in any one elementary. Uh, we need to re really seriously look at that. So I'll look forward to uh, the full recommendation uh, coming back to the board based on, um, based on your feedback that you receive in June. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Um, Operations Committee will not be meeting in May. Our next scheduled meeting is for June 28th. All right, thank you. On to Teaching and Learning. The Teaching and Learning Committee um, met on April 19th. Board members present were Mary, John, myself, and Gary. Mr. Meyer, the Director of Teaching and Learning, provided an overview of the district's response to intervention system and the professional learning communities. He explained the RTI and PLC process to bring all district systems together through collaboration to ensure that students achieve at or above grade level. He reviewed the RTI beliefs, teams, culture of collective responsibility, and the team and school-wide actions of each tier. He also provided a definition of PLCs along with the ideas and elements and an overview of district and school level PLCs. Mr. Meyer presented a draft of the 2022-2023 school year calendar. He reported that modifications were made based on feedback from various district teams and groups. And those modifications included a non-school day in each of October and February to align with the parent teacher conferences moving spring break to one week later in March as compared to the 2021-2022 calendar and one in-service day at the end of the school year. He explained that there may be an opportunity to start school prior to September 1st with the potential for a waiver or the results of pending legislation. An alternate early start version of the calendar has been created that would add additional instructional days and reduce the collaboration in-service time. He recommended that the committee recommend approval of the 2022-2023 school year calendar at the regular board meeting in May. Um, Mr. Meyer also provided an update on learning options for the 2021-2022 school year. He explained that schools will need to be flexible over the next few years to allow students to emerge from the pandemic with little or no unfinished learning. He reported that the district continues to evaluate the impacts of the pandemic virtual student enrollments, student success, and statewide trends. Families will be surveyed regarding their preference for online options next school year. He reviewed current considerations pending additional data and feedback, and he is here to share a little bit more detail about the learning options. Thank you, and in regards to the calendar, uh, based on feedback from the board, we'll be looking at June as we wait on some of those questions that we talked about a little bit. So I yep. do not have a recommendation for you Excellent. this evening. So you can 
successfully crossed that off your list. You're welcome. <laughs> um, we will be having a hearing as well, right? Yes. So um, we'll be uh, scheduling a public hearing on advancing the start date prior to September 1st. Uh, and if legislation uh, passes uh, that would make that null and void, then, then so be it. But we want to follow the proper protocol uh, that is currently in place to be able to do that for the 22-23 school year. Um, just a very quick uh, update for the full board and for the public on learning options. Um, I created uh, for the board a, a, a briefer brief than was uh, in the um, previous, that then was in our committee. But just to, to summarize and to, to follow up, um, we are currently looking at um, a survey is currently in the field, school perception survey, I believe it closed today for our families. It will take us a little while to compile those results. There's a private service that does those particular results and they, um, they, they do some data analysis and some comparison analysis. We don't get that data right away, but that's one step to determine our learning options, whether we're offering virtual options, not offering virtual options, what that looks like in the future. Uh, this evening was the first of uh, two curriculum council meetings this week. That curriculum council could also in, invite other people from their, their teams. Uh, so we had a number of staff uh, in our district talking about potential options at the secondary level. Um, and we will have a repeat option for that on Thursday of this week so staff would be able to attend. The goal would be to analyze uh, staff input, uh, potential parent interest, mm -hmm and then use that to, as well as the guidance of the Board of Education, to make, um, to determine those, those next steps. And it's hard to say what those next steps are because it's gonna depend upon some of that survey results. Um, what, what exactly we have to do next. The Board of Education should expect to either receive a recommendation uh, at the June business meeting or uh, an update on our, on our progress, depending upon what is, is appropriate. Um, and then once we establish any alternative learning models outside of normal in-person instruction for next year, uh, we obviously have to start to plan uh, specifically what those may or may not be and look like. Uh, I just wanted to update that we, uh, in, in accordance to what we talked about at Teaching and Learning, uh, based on our in current enrollment in virtual numbers as well as um, some data and information we have, we uh, should, the, the board should not be anticipating a virtual option for grades 4K through 3 next year. However, grades 4, 5 at the elementary level would be something that we would analyze the data and processes to make an informed decision. And then at 6, 12, similarly at the high school level uh, and middle school level, we would analyze interest, take staff feedback, um, analyze our own data to determine uh, the best options. So again, uh, currently, the board should not anticipate a 4K3 virtual um, recommendation. However, we're continuing to analyze um, grades 4, 5, and then 6, 12. We're kind of grade banding those together. Uh, I would add, though, that this week there's been, or over the weekend and today, there's been some changing landscape as far as the why we may offer, um, and that will uh, impact some decisions and add to our conversation. Uh, the uh, FDA approved vaccine use down to um, students that are 12 years old, which is um, our sixth grade, our sixth grade level. Um, and that would go through CDC. It's expected that the recommendation committee is meeting later this week. So it's possible by the end of the week that students down to sixth grade or down to uh, 12 years old would be, could, could potentially begin to receive vaccines, which again would, um, impact the size of a virtual program or if we would offer virtual program programming for students uh, in, in general. So we'll pay attention to the news and the recommendations that come out and use that to plan forward as well. I should reiterate that a couple things from our staff have been pretty clear. Um, they do not wish to continue with models that we've had to this year out of necessity where we're teaching in person uh, and virtually in the same section at the same time. Um, so I want to share that that has been heard uh, and I would also s share that uh, for the public and for our, our staff that any virtual option that we would be creating should we be pursuing one, uh, we would look to have minimal movement between um, 
virtual and in-person. In other words, uh, families and students would be committing to doing that for a semester uh, before we would have movement between, uh, just to provide some, con um, some consistency in education. So those are two things that have been shared by our staff, and um, I, would, I would share with our staff that those, those concerns uh, have been heard and recommendations that uh, may move forward would definitely consider those. That's my summary. Just Questions for question. Rob? Question: Would you would you expect that there would be some kind of criteria for the students who would be going? You know, yes. To say that they choose virtual, but you, but our teachers and our staff are saying no. We think they'd be better in in person. Type. Yeah, we would definitely be looking at criteria for students that would um, participate in a program especially based on the vaccine news that's come today. Um, I would envision, although I'm not, it's something I would be recommending to the board, but if we would be pursuing um, a virtual option for students that we would be looking uh, likely at an application process for students to participate in a program that would be virtual. And we would have certain criteria such as a previous performance, uh, grades, attendance, certain other factors that we see. Um, we certainly wouldn't, create um, standards that pose discrimination on, on students, uh, but we can definitely have uh, evaluative criteria of students, uh, predictors that we think would mm -hmm. allow them to be successful. I should reiterate though that uh, as we move forward with an option um, or as we get a potential recommendation that we have wonderful teachers in our schools uh, and we have wonderful in-person instruction and I sincerely hope that um, the majority of our students, uh, the very highest percentage as possible, uh, return uh, to our schools in a, in a safe environment. Because uh, again, we believe that particularly for social emotional uh, learning, um, hands-on activities in classes, uh, we just can't duplicate and even best online environments can't duplicate those. So um, thank you. I got a couple of things. Have we considered them having to maintain a GPA to stay enrolled in a virtual? I would say it's being considered. We're not to that to that point, but that has been shared uh, by by people as well. So, and on the, the table and being considered, yes. Then second two would be an emphasis on support of the staff and anything we can do to kind of navigate that transition because virtual has been a little bit of a challenge. And then third, if we could have data with funding, I'd like to see what we lose per pupil if a kid decides to go elsewhere. I think that would be good data to have on the effects of not going virtual. Um, if we don't provide that option, what we lose per district and any potential impacts financially it could have. Yeah, I can work with Anne-Marie. It's relatively simple, but we can provide that in a, a simple weekly update. I have rough numbers for those, well. but I, I don't want to share. I don't them need them now. Just, no. Yeah. 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 Just mm -hmm. with so the I, presentation, I would uh -huh. say yeah. included. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as far as supporting staff, uh, in talking with staff tonight, I would definitely agree. I can't, um, uh, uh, I think, you know, the size of what we may, if we end up offering something or what we end up offering, um, there are certain different levels of supports that's needed and different onus on staff. Um, and, you know, depending upon whether we, um, if, are we creating our own, um, curriculum, again, this would depend upon the size of programs, right? Are we, um, you know, using a vendor for certain items? So uh, there's a, a, a lot of different factors. But the, again, the first step is seeing in the initial survey coming back in the next week or two here as we get that, those results, you know, wh what, what is the scope that we're talking about? We will likely resurvey those families in a much shorter survey. Uh, especially with some pending, you know, pending news that's uh, that is coming this week, uh, and to just dial in uh, a little bit more on maybe some of the specific needs and wants that will inform inform those decisions. I think too. I I know it's you know maybe a little early for the concern, but I, I would I'm really concerned about uh, offering it for fourth and fifth grade. There's just so much stuff going on with those kids that's even beyond what the teachers are teaching them that they're learning at those grades. It's super necessary. So. Kind of reading what you say, it's important to be in school if you at all can be. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what the presumed interest is for for parents next year. Thank you. I, again, I think yeah, the the 
the initial survey responses are going to give us a little indicator of where where to go where to go next thank you I wish for our staff and for our families I had very specific information but unfortunately it's just it's, it's where the world is and where we are <laughs> are um, we needing to make a decision on that in June uh, I'm, I will either be right bringing a recommendation to the board uh, to the business meeting in in June or or an update if there isn't a need for a recommendation but um, I would want uh, for, for, for time's sake I would really want to know where we are uh, by that time by this time in, in okay. June thank you Good. thank you for thank the opportunity you. thank you so our committee is not meeting in May, but we are scheduled to meet on June 21st. All right, thank you. Um, also just want to update uh, work of the board. Uh, you all have uh, a copy of the evaluation uh, that we completed. Um, so please look that over. If you have any feedback, please uh, let me know or let uh, the members of the ad hoc team, uh, including Bev or John know. Um, Specifically, I mean, we had 12 uh, basic questions on performance of the board. Seven of those 12 were answered, agree or, or strongly agree. Um, there were some neutral, um, specifically involvement of staff as much as possible, and uh, relation and com or, uh, communication with the uh, community uh, were two things that uh, we can continue to work and improve on. Um, and then any specific improvements uh, that came out in those open-ended questions, uh, we will uh, review that as the ad hoc committee continues to work on uh, an updated evaluation system for the board uh, based on a rubric format uh, along with the superintendent's um, evaluation as well. So we will take a look at uh, feedback uh, that you brought forward in the survey. And if you have any other feedback, please let us know and we'll continue to talk and discuss about that and additional possible actions that might come from that. And with that, up, yes. I want to jump back up to board engagement. 10. Oh, sorry. 4. Yep, we can 10. do that. 4. Wow, okay. <laughs> As it gets past 8.15, I start to hurry myself. Mm. It's not um, board engagement it. opportunities. I know we didn't have SATPAT, but any other involvement opportunities the board wants to share? So with the fire department, I came for, we're trying to recruit people into the fire industry and show them what options they have, be it paid on call or making a career out of it. And we also have a pretty cool cadet program that just got back from New York. Um, I just wanted to thank the school, student services, I mean, everybody that helped make this happen for us to come in. Uh, it was a great turnout. We brought a door prop that you saw in the video where it kind of helps break down a door with an ax. And I thought it was awesome that uh, it was way more girls than it was guys that were interested in that. And they were brutal. It was really, there's a lot of aggression there taken out on that door. It was really fun. Um, we did some challenges with putting gear on to pit kids against other kids. And again, the girls were faster than the boys in a lot of that uh, competition that we had. So it was great. And thank you to everybody for having us here. All right, thank you for that. Any other engagement opportunities the board wants to share? Well, I have an ongoing engagement opportunity that I've had with the Wall of Fame Committee. And of course, last year and this year, it, we've not had the official award ceremony, but uh, we have managed with many of the high school and district staff putting some time in and using their expertise to put together what will be a a video taping in the near future of both the uh, 2019 and the 2020 award winners. They will be present, they will be interviewed, they'll be an MC. There won't be the audience with a resounding applause, but then that videotape will be um, available for everyone to view through the district website. Um, and probably by a whole lot more people than might have been able to make it to the in-person mm -hmm. ceremony. So a lot of time and effort uh, by many of the people sitting in this room, um, as well as the committee as a whole to work with some interesting circumstances over the last couple of years. All right, anybody else? All right, with that, I'll take a motion for closed session in which Mr. DiStefano promises to be a short closed session. Yes, sir. <laughs>
I move we recess into closed session for Wisconsin Statute 19.85, parent 1, parent C, to consider employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility specifically to discuss specific employees. Um, our board will reconvene into open session for the possible transaction of business and adjournment. Second. All right, a motion and a second to move into closed session. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 All right. We will be back shortly. Same spot. Same room. Same room. Way back. Last room on the left. It's not hard to think about. No, it was a scary, scary movie. Last wholesome. Last what? Sitting on our lounge table. Before they leave.
How's that for record time? Hey. <laughs> it didn't bother you, did it? back we have reconvened into open session and we will move on to 13.1 all right we have nine resignations for your consideration tonight I move the board approve the resignations as presented second we have a motion and a second to approve the resignations as presented all in favor aye, aye. aye. all those not same sign all right we do not have any leaves of absence on the agenda for tonight but we do have 10 appointments, um, many of them for the resignations you just approved. I move the board approve the appointments as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to approve the appointments as presented. Roll call vote, please. 
Yes. 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 Thank you. I have one question though. Have we ever considered third party exit interviews? Well, I don't know that we've ever really done exit interviews in this district, and if we have, it's been a while. So third party would be a probably next level, but we are starting exit interviews this year. So I um, actually have my first batch of them tomorrow. Thank you. Actually, I think Mike did do uh, mm -hmm. some exit interviews. We weren't he always was cons as consistent as it we wasn't like consistent. To be. No, yeah. it wasn't a. But he did to a number of. Uh, I think the thing with the third party is people are more likely to be more open versus worried they you know, a lot of them want to leave an avenue to come back if it ever happens so third party is a little bit more and an enemy to it mm -hmm. all right good thanks Thank you. Nicole. um then we are on to 13.4 certification of 21 graduates Good evening. I'd like to present the certification of the high school graduates. First, I'll start with the Don Smith Learning Academy. They're on track for 34 graduates this year. I don't know if you take those separately, board president, or all together. No, you can do them all together. And then for BDHS, there's 220 candidates. 220? Right. I ask for your approval. Yep. Can we motion on that? I make a motion we approve the list of uh, graduation uh, graduates for graduation uh, as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then for the certification of 2021 graduates. All in favor? Aye. 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 It was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> for effect. All those not, same time. Uh, just wait a second just in case that was delayed too. All right, then we are on to 13. Thank you very much. Uh, staff compensation, 21-22. Tonight I am recommending an increase of staff compensation by 1.23%, which is the allowable CPI, for support staff and administration. This aligns with the CPI increase approved for certified staff last month with the ratification of the 2021-22 BDEA collective bargaining agreement. I move the board increase compensation by the consumer price index of 1.23% for 2021-2022 for support staff and administration. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then for staff compensation increase of 1.23% CPI. Roll call vote, please. Mary Cohen? Yes. Lisa Panzer? Yes. Jeff Freely? Yes. Gary Spielman? Yes. Yes. Francis Yes. 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 All right. Um, moving on, payment of claims. I move for payment of claims in the amount of three million one hundred and fourteen thousand three hundred and eighty eight dollars and twenty four cents. Second. All right. A motion and a second then for payment of claims. Uh, roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. And then a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Move. Motion for adjournment, but don't. Yeah. <laughs> and second. Yeah. Um, I wasn't listening. We had second. Yes. Motion and a second. <laughs> then for adjournment. All in favor. Aye. 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 All those not. All right, take a five minute little recess, then we gotta come back and do a quick reorg. All right, All right. thank you. Hey Russ, thanks for the video, that was really nice. Oh, were you? I didn't